Lesson 7 The Concentrated Mental Demand The mental demand is the potent force in achievement. The attitude of the mind affects the expression of the face, determines action, changes our physical condition, and regulates our lives. I will not here attempt to explain the silent force that achieves results. You want to develop your mental power so you can affect the things sought, and that is what I want to teach you. There is wonderful power and possibility in the concentrated mental demand. This, like all other forces, is controlled by laws. It can, like other forces, be wonderfully increased by consecutive, systemized effort. The mental demand must be directed by every power of the mind, and every possible element should be used to make the demand materialize. You can so intently desire a thing that you can exclude all distracting thoughts. When you practice this singleness of concentration until you attain the end sought, you have developed a will capable of accomplishing whatever you wish. As long as you can only do the ordinary things, you will be counted in the mass of mediocrity. But just as quick as you surpass others by even comparatively small measure, you are classed as one of life's successes. So if you wish to emerge into prominence, you must accomplish something more than the ordinary man or woman. It is easy to do this if you will but concentrate on what you desire and put forth your best effort. It is not the runner with the longest legs or the strongest muscles that wins the race, but the one that can put forth the greatest desire force. You can best understand this by thinking of an engine. The engine starts up slowly, the engineer gradually extending the throttle to the top notch. It is then keyed up to its maximum speed. The same is true of two runners. They start off together and gradually they increase their desire to go faster. The one that has the greatest intensity of desire will win. He may outdistance the other by only a fraction of an inch, yet he gets the laurels. The men that are looked upon as the world's successes have not always been men of great physical power nor at the start did they seem very well adapted to the conditions which encompassed them. In the beginning, they were not considered men of superior genius, but they won their success by their resolution to achieve results in their undertakings, by permitting no setback to dishearten them, no difficulties to daunt them. Nothing could turn them or influence them against their determination. They never lost sight of their goal. In all of us, there is this silent force of wonderful power. If developed, it can overcome conditions that would seem insurmountable. It is constantly urging us on to greater achievement. The more we become acquainted with it, the better strategists we become, the more courage we develop, and the greater the desire within us for self-expression in activity along many lines. No one will ever be a failure if he becomes conscious of this silent force within that controls his destiny. But without the consciousness of this inner force, you will not have a clear vision, and external conditions will not yield to the power of your mind. It is the mental resolve that makes achievement possible. Once this has been formed, it should never be allowed to cease, to press its claim until its object is attained. To make plans work out, it will, at times, be necessary to use every power of your mind. Patience, perseverance, and all the indomitable forces within one will have to be mustered and used with the greatest effectiveness. Perseverance is the first element of success. In order to persevere, you must be ceaseless in your application. It requires you to concentrate your thoughts upon your undertaking and bring every energy to bear upon keeping them focused upon it until you have accomplished your aim. To quit short of this is to weaken all future efforts. The mental demand seems an unreal power because it is intangible, but it is the mightiest power in the world. It is a power that is free for you to use. No one can use it for you. 
The mental demand is not a visionary one. It is a potent force, which you can use freely without cost. When you are in doubt, it will counsel you. It will guide you when you are uncertain. When you are in fear, it will give you courage. It is the motive power which supplies the energies necessary to the achievement of the purpose. You have a large storehouse of possibilities. The mental demand makes possibilities realities. It supplies everything necessary for the accomplishment. It selects the tools and instructs how to use them. It makes you understand the situation. Every time you make a mental demand, you strengthen the brain centers by drawing to you external forces. Few realize the power of a mental demand. It is possible to make your demand so strong that you can impart what you have to say to another without speaking to him. Have you ever, after planning to discuss a certain matter with a friend, had the experience of having him broach the subject before you had a chance to speak of it? Have you ever, in a letter, made a suggestion to a friend that he carried out before your letter reached him? Have you ever wanted to speak to a person who, just then, walked in or telephoned? I have had many such responses to thought, and you and your friends have doubtless experienced them, too. These two things are neither coincidences nor accidents, but are the results of mental demand launched by strong concentration. The person that never wants anything gets little. To demand resolutely is the first step toward getting what you want. The power of the mental demand seems absolute, the supply illimitable. The mental demand projects itself and causes to materialize the conditions and opportunities needed to accomplish the purpose. Do not think I overestimate the value of the mental demand. It brings the fuller life if used for only righteous purposes. Once the mental demand is made, however, never let it falter. If you do, the current that connects you with your desire is broken. Take all the necessary time to build a firm foundation, so that there need not be even an element of doubt to creep in. Just the moment you entertain doubt, you lose some of the demand force, and force once lost is hard to regain. So whenever you make a mental demand, hold steadfastly to it until your need is supplied. I want to repeat again that power of mental demand is not a visionary one. It is concentrated power only, and can be used by you. It is not supernatural power, but requires a development of the brain centers. The outcome is sure when it is given with a strong, resolute determination. No person will advance to any great extent unless he recognizes this force within him. If you have not become aware of it, you have not made very much of a success of your life. It is this something that distinguishes that man from other men. It is this subtle power that develops strong personality. If you want a great deal, you must demand a great deal. Once you make your demand, anticipate its fulfillment. It depends upon us. We are rewarded according to our efforts. The power of mental demand can bring us what we want. We become what we determine to be. We control our destiny. Get the right mental attitude, then in accordance with your ability, you can gain success. And every man of average ability, the ordinary man that you see about you, can be really successful, independent, free of worry, his own master, if he can manage to do just two things. First, remain forever dissatisfied with what he is doing and what he has accomplished. Second, develop in his mind a belief that the word impossible was not intended for him. Build up in his mind the confidence that enables the mind to use its power. Many, especially the older men, will ask, How can I build up that self-confidence in my brain? How can I, after months and years of discouragement, of dull plotting, suddenly conceive and carry out a plan for doing something that will make life worthwhile and change the monotonous routine. 
How can a man get out of a rut after he has been in it for years and has settled down to the slow jog trot that leads to the grave? The answer is the thing can be done, and millions have done it. One of the names most honored among the great men of France is that of Littre, who wrote and compiled the great French dictionary, a monument of learning. He is the man whose place among the forty immortals of France was taken by the great Pasteur when the latter was elected to the Academy. Littre began the work that makes him famous when he was more than sixty years old.